that this is the new orange Hobby King DSM2 7 channel receiver. Uh, let's do a test. Let's see if this is a good receiver here and put the receiver on top of this aerobatic plane this time with a satellite receiver. I also did the test with a separate or without a satellite receiver. It's flying piggyback on top of this aerobatic plane. The power supply is 7.4 2 cell LiPo battery. There's one servo for a check and I'm recording one of the channels on this mp3 player for a later check on the computer. I wrote a program to analyze the signal and with this program I can identify if there's any lost frames or if there's multiple lost frames. I'll show you that later. This setup here is complete. I'll do a flight with the plane. The orange receiver flies piggyback with on the flight flying a few times very high up to 200 meters and do some aerobatics um, in the lower part of the flight. I'll show you the results later. Now I'm going to fly. Okay, back at home. Let's take a look at the results. First let's look what the signal looks like. Um, opening this signal, the sound recording in Audacity, looks like this. You don't see much at all. But if we zoom in, get some details. Just take a look. Here we see the individual impulses to the servo. If we increase, if we zoom in further, you see that this is the servo pulse, which has a certain length, and then the time in between. What goes wrong if the receiver misses a signal is that it waits longer with the impulse to the servo, so this time will be longer and the servo impulse will be lighter. That's exactly what my program analyzes. So, close this. No, we don't need to close. We open one of the documents, one of the recordings, this one, and then we see the result. There was one missed frame, one single missed frame on the total flight, which is almost nothing, which is totally acceptable, which also happens with the original Spectrum receivers. Um, now let's look at one of the um, worse results. Close this one. This was another receiver. This was a six channel orange receiver. And here the result looked like this. All the arrows indicate disturbances. The green arrows disturb, indicate short disturbances, the yellow a little bit longer and the orange even more. Um, if we make a histogram out of this, then we see that there are six single misses, one double miss, three triple, two triple misses. Uh, this is the acceptable part. It would be a the receiver would be acceptable if it would be like this. But then there's also two disturbances of 19 frames, which is about half a second, and one of 24, which is a little bit more than half a second. Now this is typical for the orange receivers, for the six channel at least, and for the four channel, that if they miss frames, then often it happens that it loses the signal for about half a second. I don't know why, but this happens a lot. Nothing in between, a few short, nothing in between, and a few about half a second. Then take the next one. This was another recording of the 7 channel receiver. Not a single glitch, not a single missed frame. Excellent. Another. This was another measurement. The previous one with that was with the satellite receiver, this one was, was without a satellite receiver, both with 7.4 volts. Then we've got one with the satellite receiver and with the battery eliminating circuit, the BEC. Also a perfect result, no misses. The same without the satellite, perfect result, no misses. Then we have the one with the single frame. 
that was on a battery of 5 volt without the satellite, but even this can be called a perfect result. So, finally, it looked that Orange or Ruby King made a very, very good receiver. Of course, this applies only for this one. I only tested one 7 channel receiver, I'll order more, but this one can be used in any model. This looks like a very good receiver. Thank you for listening.